Well, I, I just finished one work. It's, it's here. It's called, it's called Unstable Mountain. Um, what is, uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, what is it made of and uh, what does it mean, an unstable mountain? It's uh, made of porcelain and wool, uh, uh, felted wool. And uh, you can, it, it's, uh, what this, it's not, um, it, in so far, it's, um, how do you say it, not right? They're not upright. They are not upright. You can mm -hmm. put them in all kinds of directions. So they are all a bit uh, bending. Mm -hmm. It is a very unusual combination of materials, porcelain and wool. The one uh, is yeah. very hard and uh, perfect in terms of has a, ve a very smooth surface and the other one wool is soft somewhat chaotic uh, and very unformable how did you come up with the idea of combining those two very contrasting materials um because when you when you when you felt it, um, it, it, it has a kind of surface and course that look like uh, uh, how sometimes mountain surfaces are. Mm. So that was, so somehow I, I saw the connection and, and um, I, I, I made this uh, work. Um, also, it's because um, I made it during COVID uh, times, and um, because of uh, what the idea that you think um, how your life is uh, is situated uh, was. Um, like uh, um, smashed in, in, in nearly one couple of, of weeks or one day or one moment. And this, this happened worldwide. So the idea that a mountain is something stable and, and solid and uh, what you can uh, trust ju just uh, um, is, is not... Uh, um, it's not there anymore. Yeah, it's not there an, anymore. So, so I made these mountains, they, and they are not not stable. So that that that's a contrast that actually you you, you wouldn't believe. Uh, mm. So yeah, it's very much uh, through COVID uh, experience. Very uh, very surreal in a way, also. Uh, we have a question uh, from Nazar, who is asking, are they works in progress? So is it uh, the final appearance of the work or will you still be working on them, changing something? Also, I really liked how you've put them on this mirrored surface. Is this a coincidence or is it a part of the installation idea? I think it's part of the installation idea. What I really would like to have is the uh, uh, sheep's clouds uh, passing by. So oh. may maybe it will be an indoor uh, projection on on the um, on, on the ceiling, ceiling, and and then it would be all the time clouds passing by, uh, so something like this. Uh, I think so it's it's I, I like uh, also the idea that the mountain uh, ha has a, um, um, ha ha has a um, afgeronde space base mm. a yeah. circumcised space around. space uh, and that's also not 
reality, but uh, and I I can yeah I I can move them mm. and and they will stay. Uh, yeah. Float in the sky. Mm. No, they are too too heavy to float. Uh, but. I remember a couple of weeks ago when we've recorded um, this, when you made uh, your video recording for the film we were producing in collaboration with the Goethe Institute. Yeah. And by the way, everyone, it is available uh, on our virtual residency webpage. Um, and we have uh, states, statements uh, of six participants of the program there talking about uh, during the pandemic. Uh, but anyway, uh, that time you made the video, you showed them and talked about that you were worried uh, about the, the upcoming days when they need to go into the oven and um, it might be a surprise, a pleasant or an yeah. unpleasant one. I think that not everyone watching is familiar with cera ceramic, ceramics and porcelain, so maybe yeah. you can uh, just say a couple of words about the technique. Uh, I guess it would be interesting to hear and why you were worried about burning them. Uh, I, I, uh, porcelain is quite a, a difficult kind of clay. It's, uh, you have to be quite precise. It's also very flexible. It's m more like dough from, from uh, bread. And um, I was working uh, quite fast, uh, looking at, at uh, pictures of mountains, and I was working a bit sloppy. <laughs> so I, I was afraid air bubbles would be included. But I later I fired them very, very slowly, like uh, 60 degrees an hour. Up, mm -hmm. And you have to go up until the 1200, and this was 1240. So, um, uh, I got everything uh, in in in, piece, in uh, one piece out of the kiln, so uh, that was uh, surprisingly actually because I was quite sloppy in, in the way I worked. Great, but you work in uh, different materials. So uh, when you yeah. were at the residency in Saint Petersburg, you made a series of drawing but this project also had a, a social participatory component. Uh, we see your textile works in the background, then there are also the sculptures, and I know that there is also a big block of graphic works. Uh, do you have a main media or do you see yourself as a 100% multidisciplinary artist? Are you focusing on any particular media right now? Um, I used to do a lot of uh, paperwork. Actually, because of space limits, um, there is one hanging th the beer. Right, uh, I completely forgot about the paperwork because uh, at the Art Center Pushkinska 10, we have yeah. uh, a work that Mariella made um, as a present, as a birthday present yeah. for the art center during their, her residency. Uh, and it is a big uh, arc, a ship, kind of a ship. Uh, yeah. And it is linked to the history of our art center, the Pushkinska 10, uh, that was called during the early years, the arc 2021, as the arc carrying the independent artist to the new century. And we have this work uh, and it is up um, and available uh, at the Art Center. Temporarily we're closed, but um, it's there. So yeah, the paperwork. Yeah, but um, um, nowadays I'm doing textiles with uh, ceramics. Uh, the neighbor next door here, is uh, these pieces are uh, ceramics? It's uh, foam oh, porcelain, okay. and and this is woven. Mm. So uh, yeah, uh, it it seems like you're very experimental when it comes to combining different materials that first feel uncombinable. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm, I'm quite uh, happy with with the last piece. Uh, the 
are also Oh, we have a small break. Ceramics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's foam por porcelain with here there is no uh, pigments and here is pigments. Mm -hmm. uh, I think and, I can And also... these are knitted. And... Wow. Okay. I think I can also uh, show your um, textile works now uh, and... Uh, yeah. That would be probably interesting to watch while we're talking. Uh, yes, and here we are. I think I can cover up my image. Um, the photographs that you've shared with me, uh, they come from an exhibition that you had recently. Could you talk a little bit about that? And maybe a couple yeah. of words about the theme you, themes you're working on uh, in textile. Yeah, it's it's actually always about uh, vul vulnerable uh, uh, either persons or nature uh, things that can be damaged and are or or have been uh, damaged. Uh, that's even with with uh, people uh, I worked with. Uh, uh, at the Hermitage, uh, the the people from Nosleska, Nos mm -hmm. um, but with the primal nature, there was a solo exhibition, a very big one, and I made a huge installation. I worked on it for one and a half year, and it has uh, it, it's really big because the middle piece is like six and a half meters by three meters by one and a half meter and the, the yeah the standing and the horizontal rocks are also very big as you can see in my studio um it it's uh, it came after just 2006 and i really fell in love with the nature uh, and the other one was at Big C, a residency near Sydney in uh, the Blue Mountains. And you have beautiful uh, caves and, and strange uh, rocks. Uh, they, they look like flowers, and, and, but they are from stone. And this is uh, in a part of the Wallamy National Park and it's called the Gardens of Stone. And that was the inspir inspiration, actually, for this uh, installation. Mm. They look very abstract at the same time. Uh, we have a couple of comments here that I would like to share. First of all, nice studio. I can completely relate to that. It, it is a nice studio space. Yes, that's true. And uh, a question from Eliana Vilozzo, our both offline and online artists in residency, could you please tell about your feelings when you are making your work? Ah. That's an interesting um, question. Thank you, Liana. Yeah. Um, I, I, it, it's developing. Uh, like like uh, we were the scaling with now with COVID uh, times and um, I, I had uh, we were there for two weeks and I had uh, uh, grabbed my uh, calligraphy books I will show I will show a photo of the island um, for those who haven't seen it um, on our web page yet and um, then, then COVID happened actually, and uh, uh, it was very frightening for me. It was very frightening, uh, and our place, uh, Eindhoven, was one one of the worst. Uh, the region was one of the worst in Holland, and then know where, where it would if if half of the population would. Uh, be uh, con 
uh, yeah, would, would maybe infected. Huh? Infected. infected or even die or so um, I, I think I did the calligraphy uh, as a kind of ritual to to uh, to calm down and to make a lot of the same movements and to focus on on this and from there uh, we we cycled around on the island and Mel's worked already on art art uh, but I had to digest it for for like one or two weeks and then I could uh, make drawings of of the landscape uh, and after a while like weeks I, later I was a bit fed up and I started with portraits so it developed from one to to another and when I was I think in one of the blocks I wanted to combine mountains with with portraits but that was, I couldn't do it <laughs> that, that way so it turned out to be mountains but they became unstable mountains so um, I like to com combine often contrasts so be because I feel uh, with contrast I'm, I'm hitting more layers and also I, I, I want for, for me it, it tells something but for something else it could be something else so I, I want also the space that other people can uh, interpret Take the way they want. Yeah. So yes, somehow you need to have a kind of of feeling that this is what I I want to express. But then I want to do it in in a poetic way. So it 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 gives a lot of space for myself and for others as well. Uh I think it is really amazing how those pretty simple materials, very basic paper for calligraphy, very basic brush and uh, ink, how they can make such an expressive image. And I actually agree here that less is more in this case, because uh, you kind of start um, perceiving the images in a different way when you're not distracted, so to say, by color or particular form. So um, these are incredible landscapes, also a little bit like from a different planet. But I also had a feeling that the period on the island felt in a way like being on a different planet. Could you tell yes. us uh, a little yeah. bit about um, how you watched the pandemic happening and escalating from an island, how was your return to the mainland and how things are in the Netherlands right now? Um, in the beginning, we didn't know what was happening, like, like everybody else, uh, I, I, I think. Uh, um, then we stayed on. That was much uh, safer for us than to go back home. Uh, um, but after like five and a half weeks, uh, because it's also expensive and well, at a certain stage you have to go to face it and, and go back home. And we also wanted to see our son, uh, Kieran, who's uh, graduating now from uh, uh, music school. So. Uh, um then we 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 went back and um basically since then uh in the meanwhile uh things improved like uh, in the beginning there was a, a race with covid against uh, uh ec bets and everybody was thinking uh, well may maybe we have to choose who, who to save and who, who not but Luckily, that didn't happen uh, in Holland. Um, also, Germany helped, actually. We could uh, uh, export some patients to, to hospitals, so it was really good. Uh, um, right now, I, I think there are more than 300 people uh, in Isebed, so... Um, in the hospitals. In, in the hospitals. Yeah. yeah. 
because sometimes uh, people choose not to go to an hospital. Um, but I, I think we, we are good as long as we, we Dutch uh, would uh, keep the distance and do all the things that we are meant to, to do. Actually, the lockdown is Uh, small children on um, basic schools can have, uh, can go to to uh, school, uh, and even uh, secondary school has started, but only with distance, and uh, also half the time still uh, working on, uh, with computers, um, and a lot of people are fed up with it. This is uh, very dangerous, but uh, there was a this weekend there is a big demonstration planned and uh, the mayor of the power because uh, 17,000 people wanted to demonstrate against the COVID measurements me measures so uh, uh, maybe it's it's not working for everybody anymore I agree that it is um, a very difficult stage in coping with the uh, regulations and with the limitations when you already feel like it's been going on forever and you see other people starting to go out and to feel a little bit more relaxed and this is also a very dangerous point because for example I have several friends that started going out recently, I think during the last couple of weeks, because yeah. they felt safe and that everything's going back to normal. Uh, bars and restaurants are partly or partially opening and uh, the numbers are going down. And uh, two of my friends uh, got ill because it's just dangerous. So we yeah. Uh, ask everyone to be patient and uh, take care and stay in safety. Um, Maria, we have a couple of questions uh, from our viewers. Uh, first of all, um, uh, I will. <laughs> there are two questions already. I will start with um, Nazar's uh, question. The works are so crafty and time intensive, and I spontaneously thought. Is Mariella a member of any art union? I guess uh, what Nazar says is the um, incredible professional skills that are visible in your works. Uh, and uh, I also agree one can see how much time is invested in, um, in those pieces. Maybe you can, uh, to answer Nazar's question, maybe you can say uh, a couple of words about your background, education and professional practice. And back to your question, Nazar, are you a member of any professional art union today? I, I, I start with that one. Uh, um, I'm, I'm a member of the YAPMA. This is International Association of Paper Makers and Artists. And through the YAPMA, this is worldwide organization, uh, we got the uh, notice that uh, there was an in Korea. There was an art uh, nat nature art cube uh, exhibition, and you could send in. And that was the first thing we did in uh, uh, in uh, on the Schelling, um, because we thought uh, it's it's you you had to make a. a I will cube show those objects right now. Twenty by twenty by twenty centimeters. And um, I, I assembled during a walk uh, li lichen, mo mosses, and some bones uh, of rabbits. And then we bought a glue gun and, and we uh, uh, Mel did another work, work, work with uh, Rame. Bramble. Bram beads. And we, we thought we can. This is something uh, we can focus on, and it, it's uh, we can do it. 
and and we did send it away and it took like for ages like months <laughs> before it arrived in uh, korea but it did and um and it's updated. yeah and and it's now on on show and mel's wrote about it in the first uh, blog so um the, the, uh, one of the questions you also asked was um uh, I'm now doing two things at the same time. Um, my my background, um, I, I did art school um, and I did uh, uh, teacher training and art school was with textiles. Then I did uh, a post uh, art um, institute, the Jan van Eyck in Maastricht. And that, then I did sculpture. So I, I learned to weld and that, that that's really nice because you can frames. Uh, um, but basically a lot I learned after I graduated by just doing it. Uh, like I'm, I was now practicing this, this painting with Chinese, Chinese brush. Um, so if you want something, just practice and practice and practice <laughs> until uh, it, it's uh, okay. So, and the other thing I wanted to say was, I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, Sorry. While you're thinking, I just... Oh, uh, I, 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 right. I, Anastas, I know. Yeah. Um, about SPAR and, and your virtual art residency. Um, at that time in, in Toskellen, it felt Fear was so a basic uh, emotion, actually. Um, and you came up with with the invitation for us both to to blog uh, what, about what we were doing and coping with with this uh, COVID. And it felt like you're sitting in the dark. You don't know where you are or what. And then there's a beam of light. And you can focus, and after a while, uh, this beam of light gives you an impression of your room. And there are more people sitting there in the in the dark and and uh, coping with the same situation. And and I also I met other people. So they they were a bigger lockdown we were uh, having. And they were, were in their way as being an artist. They were fighting uh, this by by making art, and the fear and the illness is very negative uh, energy, uh, and making art is very positive. So uh, I also think artists are very resilient, uh, and for many people, when we came back, uh, I'm. I'm on a neighbor's app, app uh, in, in our streets, so many people they had to fight boredom or loneliness or in 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 their own uh, experience, and or or being afraid of 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 job loss or whatever. And we artists, that's mostly what what we do. We we work with ourselves and. Um, you need to be a good companion of yourself and you need to think about what, what I, am I experiencing and you have to do it with little money and so all these what usually artists also experience uh. so I think artists are doing, doing well. <laughs> yes, uh, we, we had some, one of our virtual artists in residency. Uh, I think it was Roberto Orlando who wrote that art can be a lifesaver. Uh, and yeah. uh, the more I talk to all of you, uh, the deeper I believe that art is a very, very powerful tool and it can truly yeah. be lifesaving. Uh, I should tell you, Mariella, that we are getting a lot of uh, hearts right now um, in our chat. Uh, so I think people 
can completely relate thank to you. that. And thank you for this great feedback on the virtual residency. And um, I think I'm speaking on behalf of all our team that uh, we're doing it for you and for the artists around the globe. So uh, the best feedback that we can get is just exactly what you said. Uh, for those watching, um, we, we have a, a donation program running now um, to support the uh, virtual residency. So uh, you can consider donating any amount or spreading the news about the program to uh, promote it. Uh, thank you, Mariela. We have some comments and questions I need to get to. Uh, first of all, yes, Nanda um, Raimanski, we've talked uh, to last week, right? I like the way you mix your materials. Yes, <laughs> well, th this is, I think, this is a very unique example of how to combine the uncombinable. Uh, and now a good question from Eliana. Uh, do you have a lot of physical work or is it more like a mental work when doing your art? So, and then she also writes, uh, do you feel more physically or mentally stressed, I guess, challenged uh, while doing your work? Or maybe both? Yeah, it's, it's a combination. Because I'm, I'm, I'm working quite uh, intuitive. So I'm... Then I'm... I have to work, I, I think, with materials or to paint or what, whatever and until I know what, what's more or less about uh, and like I want I, I needed to create these mountains uh, uh, two years ago I made these pr prayer rocks uh, the two uh, works and they were had small mountains they um, maybe you can show the image or you did uh, which ones do you mean the, the textile the, the works prayer. Yeah, the textile works, the yeah, prayer Yeah, I can work. show them again. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I, I question myself, to what do I do I pray? And it, the answer was to nature. And I used a drawing uh, uh, of, of a landscape in Canada. And it was woven uh, two times. One time it was woven in one go, and the other on the right side uh, the rug was woven in three layers and um, three different layers with the same image but with different yarns. Um, and then on the left side are um, all mountains from real um, like Mont Blanc and uh, Himalaya uh, existing mountains. And on the right are mountains from Chinese paintings, and they are ide idealized mountains. So they, they are mount art mountains, more or less, or mountains of the mind. And these are popping through layers of, of, uh, of, of landscape. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, 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 I like uh, all kinds of layers and hidden uh, meanings and um, it, it's developing uh, well both think I'm tampering with with the material until I I, I have to write uh, balance uh, nature seems to be a very strong uh, inspiration source for you uh, yeah. and um, it is definitely an um, uh, unexplainable phenomenon and uh, we've talked with also some of our other artists and uh, plants, mountains all the things you see in nature, it's amazing. Actually, today, um, some hours ago, I was outside with my children and they were lying on the grass and just looking uh, onto the soil and the grass for like, I don't know, 20 minutes. And uh, yeah. there was nothing, there were no insects or animals, just the grass. So uh, I yeah. came to them and I 
laid on the grass and I looked in, I looked onto the, you know, the, the yeah. surface uh, very, very closely. Wow, it's a different planet. Yeah. Definitely, the, the whole macro life yeah. and it is incredible. Um, you, on the blog, yeah. you... On the snow. Yeah, since we're talking um, about things that inspire you, uh, you also mentioned uh, the, this portrait series. I haven't shown it yet, so I'm going to put it up right now. And uh, these, these are portraits of uh, different artists that I suppose are figures that inspire you. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, um, uh, well, uh, after uh, back <laughs> after uh, the the landscape, I I wanted to give it a try with, with portraits, and then I what should I take? I was watching each night Netflix films from uh, Korea. <laughs> so I, I, I started with, <laughs> with, with this, this kind of uh, things. Then I thought, what the heck, uh, these actors mean nothing to me. So uh, let's try the people who, who the are actually the artists who really meant something uh, to me. Maybe this is also with COVID that you are, as an artist, you are looking back uh, because you are facing your own mortality and you're, you're lo looking back uh, of what you have done uh, in the last couple of 20 or 30 years. So I started with the first one uh, who was really important uh, for me, that was Pablo Picasso. And then it... Uh, um, Louisa Bourgeois, uh, Giacometti, Francis Bacon, uh, Lucien Freud, uh, Key, uh, Kiefer, Anselm Kiefer, a lot of German uh, uh, artists actually, Richter, um, uh, Marlene Dumas, um, Rebecca Horn, was there? No, I, I, anyway, ma many artists. Uh, and I, I liked uh, IYY actually. I liked uh, um, having different uh, images and trying uh, them. Um, like um, when uh, Lucian Freud was a young boy together with his uh, grandfather and when he was uh, uh, and when he was old. And yeah, but I'm, I'm just practicing actually, but they were important examples for, for me. So they meant uh, uh, emotionally, they meant a lot. Uh. Thank you. Uh, we also have uh, a question from Nazar. Uh, would Mariella recommend artists working with uh, biology? So. Uh, do, Nazar, do you mean uh, like bio art, combining biology and art, or working with n n nature and um, biological patterns? Uh, okay, bi biological patterns. I hope I understood the question right. Um, Mariella, uh, are there any artists uh, you could recommend? Um. The, it, 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 um, interesting, uh, but, but not everybody can do it. it is the making the combination of um, physics and uh, art, and in 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 this field, not many people are very good. Uh, I I think it's quite new. But there are some uh, really good, uh, like um, we have uh, a quite young artist in Holland, Zorro Feigel, and and he's he's combining uh, processes, uh, and yeah, that that looks uh, it's it's more scientific, but it it looks like uh, 
uh, uh, yeah, growing of things and, and mm. uh, you, uh, it, it needs to be your medium, mm. uh, I, I think, to do it uh, really good. Mm. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you for all the questions, uh, everyone who's watching. Uh, I think we're having an amazing audience tonight and I'm happy to see a lot of our um, artists and uh, members of our community. Uh, we have a couple of minutes left, so if you have something you would like to ask Mariella, uh, then this would be the right time to post your questions and um, I will start with another question from myself and it is uh, whether you are now working on some new projects maybe you can tell us about what will be the first thing you are going to do after the quarantine is over in the professional field or just as a normal person uh, is there uh, something you have already on your list? Yeah, we, we had uh, a lot of uh, red crosses in, in our uh, agenda, in the schedule. Um, well, one is, is uh, St. Petersburg, so hopefully we can put something uh, in the next year maybe uh, to to go and do the project. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, there was a part one that I would, I wanted to do in in Holland with outsider artists, and there was a part two I wanted to do in in uh, Russia with outsider artists. Hopefully, in in the next months, I can do part one in in Holland with with the outsider artists here. Then we, Mels and me, have a schedule in uh, Denmark in October, but Denmark still closes uh, the board, borders for Dutch people. So yeah, hopefully it's it's open. It's at Guliago and uh, Ceramic Center in in Denmark to to make uh, uh, art. I, actually, I'm looking into. Um, looking into s snow and ice actually <laughs> uh, wow. and i want to fire it yeah with wood wood fire kilns that giving us smudgy uh, surface that that's what, what i'm looking uh, for um yeah um that, that that's uh, and and a couple of uh, exhibitions actually oh, oh, also the landscapes i have to uh, make an etching for a uh, graphic uh, um, uh, at uh, the 4th of July Mels is doing his uh, presentation and, and interview he will show That's, that's still a problem. <laughs> um, and we have uh, with Katie Woodruff, an Australian artist from Tasmania, we have a show at the end of the year. So I'm, I'm, I'm making a new work uh, for, for this one. So. Sounds like there is a lot on your list and uh, I do hope that uh, you will manage all that and have enough time and um, resources. Uh, so, is there anything you would like to tell uh, our viewers? Any message you want to send out to the world? Yeah, m maybe because of we, we went to Tasmania and we went to uh, um, Big Sea in the Wallamy National Park and director Ray Bolleton and her husband Yuri Bolleton are, um, Yuri is fighting uh, um, to, to the sustainability uh, uh, 
to, to keep the park uh, safe and the surroundings safe because there are a lot of mining companies in, in Australia who, who try to, to grab uh, these uh, pristine uh, nature resources. And um, since, since then, actually, uh, I'm, I'm respecting uh, the, the environmental uh, movement a lot. And I, I, I think, that now this is something else I'm, I'm going to say, like, like with the Black Lives Matter movement, I think we we it's growing. It's growing worldwide, and I think with the environment or with people being poor and richer, and with being not so equal as other people, um, it it's becoming one big world, and we we cannot think in in nations. Or, or groups, we have to think uh, globally. I'm con convinced, actually. I think this is a very strong statement, and um, I completely support that. And maybe one of the things that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic showed us is that um, in the end, we are all the same human beings. And uh, if we want to get through we need to stay together and support each other uh, there is uh, another yeah. question and i think that's going to be our last question question for today from uh, nanda remanski she writes hi mariella i read your post and your comment on fvd is their politics influencing your art practice I heard them say on the television that they see art as an undermining of democracy. Um, any comments on that? What, what was it? I, I, I got uh, half of the question that you fell uh, Sorry, it, it was, uh, hi Mariella, I read your yeah. post and your comment on FVD. Is very politic oh, okay. influencing your yeah. art practice? I heard them say on the TV that they see art as undermining our democracy. Yeah. yeah, we in this region, our region of Brabant, they rule. They they uh, in the this is a extreme right wing party. Uh, what and, does and, uh, uh, sorry, but what does FVD stand for for those who are Forum for they, they call themselves Forum for Democracy. And, and <laughs> but they're opposite. Yeah, they, they are extreme right wing. They, they got uh, the biggest party from the le last election. This was uh, in, in regional uh, provinces uh, election. But everybody kept them out. Mm -hmm. uh, they are, the first thing it was get more or less rid of culture. Mm. Culture doesn't exist. It's spare time. So, yeah. It's Crazy. Probably we are facing, also because of COVID, uh, governments are spending so much money. So in the end, you you, you know what's, what's the outcome. The outcome is art will be less, uh, um, will be smaller and smaller and uh, spending cuts and and so on so yeah that's i i think will be the future <laughs> so yes uh, we are worried worried stiff about this uh, form for democracy yeah yeah i do hope that things won't get that bad and that there might be other structures and funding bodies from the outside that can support your region and professional artists because uh, you cannot underestimate the role of art in our life and especially during these challenging times. 
thank you everyone. Uh, thank you for your questions, for your comments, for tuning in. Uh, for those uh, who joined a little bit later, this was an interview with uh, Marielle Vandenberg from the Netherlands who uh, is our former spa artist and now um, a member of the virtual spa residency program. Uh, we will see each other next Saturday uh, during our next live interview and uh, stay updated and follow our announcements and uh, see you everyone online. Mariela, have a nice weekend. It was incredible to talk to you and great pleasure so thanks and see you yeah. bye bye bye, bye.